Hi, welcome to the Careers Unfiltered podcast with Mentoria. You may know your dream job. You may know your dream career. But do you know what goes on behind the scenes in your chosen career path? Have you been able to separate the glamour from the reality in your career? Do you know the good, the bad and the ugly in your career? Most people walk into their careers without having any idea in terms of what really happens in that career, how to crack success, how to get the right job, how to grow in the career. Don't be those people. Get the ins and outs of your career path through some of the best subject matter experts and industry professionals that Mentoria will bring to you on the Careers Unfiltered podcast. No, you only fly one kind of aircraft. In the in in my case, I'm flying an Airbus family of aircraft. A family means the uh, basic premise of operating the machine is remains the same. See, as a pilot, when you basically you are flying an aircraft. Licensed to fly a specific kind of aeroplane, and uh, whatever that aeroplane can do for you, uh, from commercial point of view, it can carry cargo, it can carry passengers, and uh, it can also be ferried from one place to the other, keeping all the safety procedures in place, which is uh, decided by the uh, aviation regulator uh, of that particular country. So you are flying the plane, keeping all those things uh, in check. See, becoming a pilot, you have to align a lot of things together. You have to choose your training school. You have to uh, get your funds in place. That's uh, one of the most uh, important prerequisites before you join uh, or join this journey of becoming a pilot. Uh, academically, it doesn't demand much from an individual. You need to uh, have a science background. Physics and maths is required with 50% marks, which I think everybody should be okay with. Uh, apart from that, it's mostly you need to align your uh, uh, flight school and the funds that is required to to go on your uh, flight training. So that takes about a year or a year and a half, maybe six months. Depends on how well you do your homework. So from so for somebody who's in tenth standard, I, and he's very sure uh, to to uh, go on this journey, then. Uh, he will have to do his homework and figure out from where he wants to do his training from, how is he going to get the front funds, and how is the market doing? Because it's a very market-driven training. So any training that you do is only uh, valid for a certain amount of, a certain number of years. So you will also have to jump into this bandwagon at the time when the market is picking up. So once you are out, you can always get a couple of opportunities to get into an airline. That's the minimum requirement. Even oh. the airline doesn't give you any brownie points uh, for being an engineer uh, who wants to apply for a job of pilot. There is uh, one school in India which may uh, who, take an exam. Uh, that is Indra Gandhi Rashtra Run Academy. There are a couple of cadet programs uh, which uh, Indigo also is a part of the cadet program where you might have to go through a series of interviews and and uh, and written exams. But apart from these chosen few, you can enroll into a flight school, which doesn't uh, ask you to go for any specific examination. And, uh, and you can start your flight training straight away. Feel I, I'm afraid it doesn't have any kind of online learning as such. Uh, it, it has, it's a practical uh, field. You have to fly the aeroplane in real, it physically, to learn the basics of flying aerodynamics and other subjects, communicating with uh, the air traffic controller. So it has to be, it's a very experienced based training. It is not a theoretical training at all. See, it's a very demanding profession, to be honest. So the first thing is for you to be in this profession, it has to come from a place which is within. Uh, you have to uh, invest a lot 
mentally also physically also and uh, then only you can you know reach a comfortable place uh, in this profession so the first question is first answer is rather that is it coming from a place within there is a lot of glitter associated with this profession uh, which we keep on uh, harping on online social media but there is a lot that goes beyond uh, that so you have to answer yourself uh, if it's coming from a place which is deep within you if the answer is yes then uh, as i said it's a very experience based field you keep on evolving as a professional when you start flying those uh, little planes to get your uh, commercial pilot license uh, your experience level is not is you're very raw as a person then you keep on getting those experiences flying in different weather conditions flying different kinds of uh, you know uh, airports and and environments and you keep on building on those things so but the first thing important is it should come uh, very naturally to you and uh, your gut should say that yes uh, you want to follow this for uh, for a long time in your career so different governments will have different schemes for different uh, uh, reservations in india for for giving them grants uh, for flying training but for somebody who is just going plain through the normal channel uh, there are few ways of getting into an airliner cockpit so number one would be uh, you do your training fund your own training which will cost somewhere on uh, 30 to 40 lakhs for your uh, initial training that is commercial pilot license and you can do it from india from us from new zealand depending on different kind of flight schools that you apply for uh, the idea is to get your flying done in a way that your regulator wants you to do the specific Uh, minimum number of hours required is uh, 200 hours so once you do those flying you clear some papers and you get your commercial pilot license and uh, the other way is to join air force and uh, spend some time in air force uh, which is a longer way to getting into a commercial aviation and once you are out of the air force whatever number of hours you got gather from there that is used for to get you a commercial pilot license as well so you can convert your uh, license to a uh, ATPL which is also called as air transport pilot license and uh, things like coast guard you can also join coast guard and spend some years there fly uh, their planes and again use those hours to get your uh, commercial pilot license and uh, apply to the airlines but these are longer uh, uh, you know journey is longer there about 8 to 10 years in uh, defense so as to speak uh, but if you want to get into it in a in a shorter time then the idea is to fund your own training and and get going uh, so we fly regulations to be honest uh, so because i am in an airline the airline is a little more organized so they give you a roster to fly uh, a roster to fly for the entire month so i know exactly what i'm doing for the entire month this entire month of may you know so i can basically uh, set life set my life accordingly but yes your uh, day can be as short as 4 to 5 hours of duty time to as long as 12 hours of duty time so that is the spectrum i'm uh, you're looking at you can fly uh, two sectors to as uh, long as four sectors so yeah this is quite uh, quite a bit of spectrum i'm talking about people think it's autopilot who does all the work but uh, at the end of the day uh, you need to give commands to the autopilot autopilot won't know uh, what to fly where to fly until uh, the human beings behind the machine tells them what to do uh, and it goes in uh, all situations where you uh, whether you have weather around you you need to deviate from your normal routing or uh, beat any emergency procedure that you're handling so uh, yes autopilot is given to decrease your workload so that the entire economics of uh, commercial aviation makes sense because uh, you can utilize your set of crew for longer uh, duty period because autopilot reduces your workload in uh, less uh, uh, you know like cruising time and all but uh, yeah it is the humans who flies the machine not the other way around
as i said earlier a lot there's a lot of glitter that comes with this uh, tag of uh, of being a pilot uh, but tell let me tell you once you work for about 10 hours uh, in a day where you are flying in a pressurized cabin where the altitude is always 7000 6000 feet so you basically not uh, in the ground level so as to speak technically uh, your body takes a lot of toll so you need to be really disciplined and uh, maintain your health uh, to the highest order to survive in this industry. It's not so easy. So, and you're doing it day in, day out. It's not that like you're doing it one day and you're getting two days off. So you're almost flying five to six days in a week. So yeah, so health, managing your health is uh, is sacrosanct in, in this profession. There are a lot of challenges. Your uh, life is full of disruptions, disruptions depending on how the day is going for you. For example, if you are scheduled to fly, so say Delhi uh, from Bangalore, and uh, you have set your, and you come back to Bangalore again in, in the evening, but you have weather or you have some technical issue because of which you may have to divert to some other airfield. From there on, you refuel and you come back to uh, your original destination that is Bangalore, and you will eventually get late. And, uh, and, so there are a lot of disruptions that happens in in uh, in uh, flying, commercial flying, especially during these kind of times when it's monsoon or when it's uh, uh, irregular operations taking place in the month of December, where a lot of airfields in the north uh, of India are experiencing delays because of fog and all. So uh, disruptions is is uh, second nature to to our profession. So you have to handle those. You need to have uh, a lot of discipline to maintain your schedules. I can give you the number, but uh, it's also a lot of other factors that you need to consider. For example, if you are a 21 year, a 21 year old commercial uh, pilot with a license uh, under your belt, you can get a job and uh, you will start your life uh, with about say 1.5 lakhs a, a month. But again, the question is how many jobs will give you that kind of money uh, when you are 21 year old? Uh, so that's a question that you answer yourself and uh, and plus that too for uh, somebody who is just who is a plus two who's not done, done a graduation or or a post graduation and uh, this is the requirement of the profession it is completely paying on the training that we have done and not on the academics solely uh, which is a departure from the normal uh, from the norm to to so as to say. Are our minds are designed to adapt as human beings also and more so as pilots because we are already in a very dynamic profession where things can change very fast in, in a very little time. So that is something which has helped us, I believe. Uh, we are all, all already adapting in nature. But uh, how the uh, entire field or industry has taken to it is, is something commendable because, uh, you know, if you are putting... Uh, hundreds of people in a pressurized cabin in an environment where already there is a, a threat of uh, you know uh, something spreading through air so you you can imagine it's it's a it's a losing situation it's a losing cause you know from there the industry has come out and come out like how so there are a lot of uh, changes that has happened in the procedures to uh, keeping covid in in mind but again, this is a black swan uh, event which happens once in 100 years, to be honest. So, but yes, the industry has coped well. We have adapted very well as professionals, as employees. And uh, I think uh, things are looking good and quite safe.